get started, okay? Okay. All right, so in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Curriculum Committee for November 27, 2023. In accordance with the board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast from Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on agenda item. Ms. Cox, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Pumphrey? Ms. Booker Dwyer? Ms. Dominowski? Here. Ms. Dolosky? Present. Ms. Cox, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. DiDonato? Present. Dr. Wistead? Present. Ms. Myers? Present. Ms. Shea? Dr. Elmendorf? And I see no other members. Okay, thank you. Committee chairs will facilitate discussion by calling off names of committee members to speak in turn. Committee members will also acknowledge they have a question by calling on the chair, then saying their name. Staff members will answer any questions posed by committee members by saying their name first, then speaking. Staff members that want to add any discussion may call on the chair to speak, then saying their name. If the chair calls for any motions, the committee member will move and say their name, and a second committee member will second and say their name. The chair will then state, may I have a roll call vote? Assistants will speak each committee member for their vote and record appropriately for the ETA. Okay, so we have an abbreviated um, agenda today because, I know uh, call it. because of um, a couple contracts we thought we needed to review, but things have changed, correct, Dr. DiDonato? That is correct. We have um, a contract that is not moving forward at all, um, a contract that is being um, delayed um, till January um, and another contract that doesn't need to come through a curriculum committee. So we've been able to remove those from the agenda today. Okay, so um, I apologize to committee members, We, but to cancel the meeting after it's already been um, publicized is not a good thing. So we decided just to go ahead because there is one um, new business or finish of other business. Um, and that's the review of elementary advanced academic books. Um, so this was reviewed and discussed at our November 2nd curriculum committee meeting, um, but the committee did not formally vote to move this forward. And for public record, the committee needs to vote. So Ms. Dr. DiDonato, you just want to review that a little bit for us? Of course, uh, somebody. Sure, I'm going to actually turn over to uh, Dr. Wisted and let her give you a very brief overview. Sure, I mean, we, you could go through the slides, but basically um, additional books are being considered um, due to, here we could go to the, the next one. Um, we went through the 6002 process uh, due to the new elementary language arts curriculum. There uh, was a necessity to add in advanced academic novels um, to be inserted and new planners to be um, created for groups of students who are in the advanced academics pathway. So if we go to the next slide, I think it talks about that. Um, they went through the 6002 process. Keep going, next slide please. Oh, and that's it, okay. So, um, and I believe the list was provided to you at the last meeting as well with some notes from the reviewers of the different books. And um, at the last meeting, Wade, Mr. Kearns answered a lot of questions for you. So we're here just to get the approval so that we can move forward and start ordering those books and getting in them in the hands of students. Okay. Um, are there any additional questions from last time? Um, Ms. Demonowski? Yes. Um, is this 
something that we don't currently have, um, like a ELA advanced ELA for our students, or is this replacing something that we do have? So there's always been an advanced pathway, and there are some novels that um, already correlate with the, the new curriculum, and so it's still happening. This is just adding to it. It's a supplement for, for additional novels. Is it something that there's a strong need for? Do we not have enough novels in? I'm just um, I'm trying to figure out if it's you know worth the extra money to put in to have more novels and creating a new um, what do you call it a, a new um, schedule or a new um, planner like planner, short yeah. planner. So these yeah. the new novels that were selected align more with the new curriculum so that the teachers like the themes and concepts are more aligned. So that skills that the teacher might be introducing with everybody that students who are on the advanced academics pathway might then demonstrate in a novel versus like the anthology, they're better aligned. So the teacher has to do sort of like less trying to make connections. They're much more connected with the new reading series. And what is the total, you know, ask for the contract? There isn't a contract coming. Um, the, the books are already, um, any of the novels are, could be purchased under an existing contract, so there's not a new contract coming. This is just the approval of the novels. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, and Ms. Um, Brooker Dwyer, you're also online now, correct? OK, thought I, I thought you were. OK, no other questions? What? Oh, Ms. Delusky's here. I just wanted to let you know. Right. Oh, she, hi, this, hi, this is uh, Tierra Booker DeWire. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. I just wanted to make sure that Ms. Cox had you as present for the um, meetings. I thought saw your phone number pop up. Do you have any questions, Ms. Booker DeWire? I do. I just have one question about the instructional materials. So I know that the State Department of Education is rolling out um, resources to support school systems in identifying high quality instructional materials. And um, and so could you just let me know how are we planning to use that in Baltimore County? And if so, would these type of materials um, fall under that category to use the, the rubrics and things that they that they're rolling out? So yes, we are going to use the resources provided by MSD with regards to um, the high quality instructional materials. While they have the rubrics out currently, the evaluation of curriculum materials won't happen for another year. So these are supplemental novels. It's not a whole curriculum. So this would be great novels to have no matter what. These would be things that would be able to provide enrichment and acceleration for students. Um, Either way, with regards to, and since we just purchased an elementary curriculum, we would not be looking at revising and changing that curriculum product um, within the next like year and a half when we do anticipate. I think that's the timeline that MSD was saying right now. Megan? Okay, perfect. I was just wondering about that. Yeah, I was just going to add to that because I think it's a great question. One thing that the high quality instructional materials framework addresses is about knowledge building. And so when Dr. DiDonato and Dr. Wistep were talking about in to Ms. Dominowski's questions about better aligned, it isn't just for convenience or, you know, themes. It is really about that knowledge building approach, which is a part of that research for the science of reading. And that's a big part of the framework that you just referenced, Ms. Booker Dwyer, is that the when choosing materials, it isn't just about alignment to standards because lots of different topics align to standards. It's that plus how are they curated sets that actually intentionally build knowledge through those text sets around an essential question, a theme, and some of the other ways that Dr. Dinato shared. So I think um, had these frameworks been available prior, they would actually be the exact reason why we need to expand the novels for advanced academics when we choose a new curricular. Because while we could, to Dr. Dino's point, and what we have been doing is making some correlation to try to time the novels in a way that'll make sense for teachers. 
The high quality instructional materials framework requires districts to be intentional and thoughtful about building knowledge through curated text sets around a topic of instruction, um, which is a part of the shift when we talk about the science of reading. Um, you know, when I first started teaching reading, I always thought it was just about strategies and we could read about frogs one day and Abraham Lincoln the next day because it was just about the strategies. But the research says that's not true, that the knowledge building matters. And that's something that these frameworks you reference really do emphasize, which is exactly what lines up with the intention behind choosing new novels for advanced academics when you've chosen a new series that has a whole new set of content knowledge that you're trying to build. So I wanted to just emphasize it's actually exactly why we need to do that more so than just you know it aligns in in topic or for ease of the teachers thank you for that those are my questions okay sure thank you any other um questions okay oh I lost my okay so i think we the motion we need is to approve the list of books is that what we are approving because it's not a contract. Correct. Oh, correct, we're approving the list. OK, so may I have a motion to approve the list of advanced academic books as presented? So move Stolowski. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Tom asking. Thank you. May I have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Cox? Yes, Ms. Lichter. Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer. Yes. Ms. Damanowski? Yes. Ms. Solowski? Yes. Thank you. Is there any further business um, from any committee members or staff? Nope. Hmm. OK, the last item on the agenda is announcements, and the next curriculum committee meeting will be oy, Jan oh, January 4th, 2024. So we will see Ms. Domanowski, you look puzzled. I I I didn't know we, we weren't having one in December, but, but yeah, I think they they're most of the committees aren't having a December meeting just because of the frenzy of December. So um, we aren't either unless I guess we're OK with contracts, right, Dr. DiDonato? OK, great. <laughs> then the next time our committee will meet is in the new year on January 4th. Um, so hearing um, none, since there's no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Um, thank you everybody for joining this very brief meeting. Um, and again, it wouldn't have been brief, but we had the contract um, changes, so that is why it's very short. Have a wonderful rest of your day and week, and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Good thank night. You.